Hello, my name's AJ. I was recently given a Rubik's Cube by a friend of mine, and uh, I also love Lego, so then I decided uh, what better what thing to do than to create a Lego machine that solves uh, Rubik's Cubes. So I went on the internet and I found a bunch of other people that do that and we got inspired by the MindCuber project and so we built our first MindCuber and then we started to run into the limitations of the MindCuber and so we decided to try to make it better. So this is what this machine has become. It is 100% Lego components. We've integrated a display system to let the public know what's going on. It's all about engagement so it can operate in a couple different modes. It can operate in the typical manual mode where you just put it in or it can operate in an autonomous demo mode. So we're just going to let it run in the demo mode right now where we stick the cube in there, uh, solved. And then what it's going to do is it's going to mix up the cube uh, randomly and it indicates it with the arrow down here. And then the public will watch and uh, be entertained. We've basically taken the original MindCuber design and tried to make it a lot more robust and we've added um, some additional components, uh, changed some of the programming a little bit. One of the mo big modifications that we did was we took some mini uh, figure capes and added a shield around the Lego color sensor and this allows the color sensor to operate in all different kinds of light without um, uh, misreporting the color readings. And then we've been doing a lot of uh, reinforcements to make sure that it's durable. Uh, we ran this for three days at Rose City Comic Con uh, without any issue. And uh, so far today at BrickCon, we've blown out a motor and broken three pins. So I think we're starting to reach some of the, the uh, limits of what the Lego plastic can endure. But um, we're determined to solve it. One of the other fun things that we've done is we've wired in an exterior battery source to power the EV3 so we're not going through all of the batteries or rechargeables that you normally would. And we did that pretty nicely by essentially creating a couple fake batteries with the wires attached and then we just popped them into the bottom. So now it's gone into the solve phase. The arrow has indicated that it's now solving and it is currently going to take 25 moves to solve the Rubik's Cube. It's always amazing how it looks like it's often getting worse before it gets better, but I trust the algorithm. So next year we plan on doing another one. We're going to base it on the brick pie and we're going to incorporate some camera systems and try to get the time down, but we're going to keep this one around for the purist. And then we're going to try to replicate a few that use the uh, finger system and try to get as many hands in there as possible. We're going to try to get it down to at least the 20 second solve where currently it takes anywhere from, you know, a minute, minute and a half typically, once it goes into the solve phase. And now it'll do a nice little victory dance in traditional MindCuber fashion, and then the crowd will go wild. And there you go. And now it enters the obligatory 30 second rest phase, at which point it will repeat. I hope you enjoyed it.